some things. <laughs> uh, and the testing and the test tag. So, okay, someone say something, uh, something like super, like, oh, nope, never mind. I heard dumb things. <laughs> what? All right, are we good? Are we on the internet? Yeah. 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 Can I be heard now? <laughs> okay, let me retry this again. I, Chuck Baker, hate romance and love. There you go. Now you can clip that and have all the fun in the world uh, with that. Have do what you gotta do. Um, welcome to tonight's episode of A Sinner's Dream. My name is Chuck, and I'm your DM for tonight. It's only like the third time I've ever said that in my life and on stream. Anyway, um, welcome to the nonsense. Um, Chuck, yeah, let's talk about things we gotta get out of the way. What do you want, Dylan? No, no, it's not things we got out of the way. You tell us what you hate. Tell us what you love. Okay, well. He doesn't love. Were you we love paying attention? Forge. Do you know? Here at negative two charisma. You want to do the ads? No, I don't remember okay. the ads. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, who do you know? Even better. So uh, we are uh, big fans of Foundry around here. They take care of us pretty well. It is the best VTT uh, available out there. It is self-hosted. So if you are tired of other people's services getting in your way of your game and slowing things down, making things a huge slog, and are okay with people connecting to your internet while you make the most beautiful VTT atmosphere for your players, Foundry is the way to go. Now then, the other thing is that if you don't want to have to do all the, you know, nonsense of hosting your own server or having everybody connect to your internet, Forge-VTT has your back. Uh, fantastic hosting service for Foundry. Has tons of space that I don't even touch with the World Builder tier. See, I don't even, I don't even pay attention to it anymore uh, because apparently I'm, you know... Moneybags Baker, that's not true, but you know, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Uh, but they, you know, 200 nodes around the world makes it to where having an international game, incredibly possible and easy. Uh, there's no latency across all of our games. Um, and that pair is a match made in heaven. Unlike- I've got my VPN on. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tonight's episode is also brought to you by Heavy Arms, one of my favorite uh, and probably favorite homebrewers. And now that I actually think it, he is probably my favorite homebrewer uh, out there. We use his Gunslinger here, but if you go and check out his Patreon page, he's cranking out new stuff on a pretty regular basis. The latest things that he's done has uh, he's updated his Heavy's Haversack of Everything, where he updated all of his subclasses with some new errata and, you know, named a few things, a couple more memes, because he's the meme lord of the, of, of you know, all things DD. It's pretty fantastic. Go check them out. Heavyarms.com. Uh, tonight's episode, you'll hear a bunch of different sounds. Uh, here at Neg2, we are a big fan of tabletop audio. If you need anything that you want to play, like you can just go and download it for free a lot of the time from tabletopaudio.com that I'm aware of. Um, but you can go over to their Patreon and get some more, uh, you know, more customized stuff. Um, we also are a big fan of Michael Gelfi here and his ambiances because, you know, he has everything from ocean waves to sewer sounds, which is weird because I don't know how he went into his sewer and got those sounds with equipment without a permit. But I'm not going to ask those questions. <laughs> um, you know, and then we're big fans of Midnight Syndicate as well. They're some of the more orchestraic stuff that uh, you'll hear in the background that's a bit darker and a bit, you know, uh, things that put your players on edge from time to time. Uh, you know, we've got all sorts of other stuff that we use as well, but unfortunately, JD has a very, uh, big task ahead of him. What you got, JD? Make me laugh. Well, I mean, it's not funny, or else. All right. So listen, I like to have a lot of fun here in Negative 2. We know that. Very dry sense of humor. Sometimes I say things... And people get upset by them, right? Last night, I made a lot of really, really aggressive comments about Ryan's hawk on counterfeit eggs, okay? And after a lot of consideration and some reflection, I've decided that I'm just, I'm here for it, you know? I think uh, we should just all just enjoy counterfeit eggs. Like, if, if you got counterfeit, at elf eggs to get by, then whatever. Who am I? <laughs> 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 
What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Send him in. Send him to me. Now say chubby bunny. <laughs> the joke is, is he really hates boiled eggs. Send me. I love boiled eggs. Send me your eggs. I'll take them. That's part of the joke. He had to say that. Fuck, fuck Ryan. <laughs> All right. I'll accept him. I don't fade away. What back is going to, on? Back to you, Charles. Wait, you mean if I um, send you eggs, I get a fuck Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. what? Eggs are really cheap. <laughs> uh, I'm in the other window, like, pulling up my character sheet, and I turn, <laughs> and this is going on. <laughs> what are we doing? Hi, Mac. Welcome to Neg 2. Uh... What the fuck? My whole office uh... smells like these fucking eggs. <laughs> Not great. Well, so, they wouldn't. They, they wouldn't if you had them left them there for three weeks before you ate them. Christ. Damn. <laughs> you have just overnight without 12, refrigeration. Twelve thousand nine hundred ninety-eight. I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting there. Uh, the shorty. Okay. So the reason why we're talking about counterfeit eggs. Oh yeah, dice. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. There's, I so I can there's eat. a purpose here. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have elf eggs. Uh, down at the bottom of your screen in chat. Uh, whenever you have 2,000, you can click on that little funky point and pointy aired little jerk. Click on it and then click the 2,000 button and get an entry into a dice giveaway for our. What dice set are we doing this month? Do you know the name? Nope, I don't have a clue. Boy. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. 2,000 because 1,000 was too much for our intrepid DM. It was, no, thousand. it's the um the Elysium ones, the, the, the two kind of fouls button, the, the two fouls button, clear ones. Right? Yes, you the, said fuck nut. <laughs> I don't. What are you doing? Why ask me uh, a question how, and then not let me answer? How quickly because we fall we're jerks apart. Here. Well, listen, we're your neg too. I don't know what you want from us. Go ahead and just give us the radio. Hey, Columbus, we can't turn back. Extra bean means extra. Stay on there and this is KSMR Radio News. I am Cooper Castleberry. A sizable earthquake rocked Kazmar earlier this week. The construction on the railway has been ground to a halt, so the detours around 113th to 56th are going to continue to be your best bet to get into downtown. Experts are looking into the cause of the quake. The Kazmar police are currently on the lookout for former Lieutenant Gerald Fitzgerald. He is wanted for questioning and are offering a 300 gold note reward for any information on his whereabouts. Scientists are rumored to finally crack the code on flight. They expect the sight of a large zeppelin to begin gracing the skies within the week. And now, to Bart with Sports. It might have been the same. It shouldn't have been, but, you know. Hey. So, unfortunately, Veda is not here. So who wants to do the recap for last week since, you know, our radio recap is never helpful. My girlfriend died. I went to a funeral and I'm sitting at home quiet. Got it in one. Crushed it. Ta-da. Done. <laughs> Donezo. Yep. Um, I tried to die. Made an honest effort at it. Saving copper. And copper didn't let it happen. Too bad. <laughs> Pip, Pip got to have uh, another little chat with uh, Alhora. Before Adelaide so rudely interrupted. <laughs> my death sequence. And uh, as far as Wilhelm's, I, I was, I spent the week kind of going back and forth trying to be by myself. Pip followed me around quite a bit. <laughs> Um, the first night Pip took his eyes off me, I went up to the top of this lighthouse, and, uh... Surely by chance. Adelaide, <laughs> if you're watching this, we miss you. He's not watching this? <laughs> what are you fucking talking about? <laughs> Sorry. Because there was no mention of explosions or fire, or, you know. That wasn't last week. week before. Wasn't it? Was the week yeah, before. Was the week before. No, it was the week before. Man, I'm Fucker. so smart. This one was recovering <laughs> from that. Yeah. Trying to kneecap. Oh, no, no, it was. Was it? 
was it? No, it was, was it the beginning. Week? It was the beginning of last week. Mm. Because you guys chased him down in the place, and then he turned to ashes, and then you right. Know. So Pip was. Uh, we were. We ended it the week before with Pip going to eat him or not. Yep. Then uh, okay, so that, Harold that... polymorphed him before he could eat him. All that yep. shit literally then, happened last yeah. week. Wow. Yes, yeah. it did. Oh, wow. Last week was bad. I'm oh, fucking traumatized. Then the, the... all six of us to be one Adelaide. I know, right? <laughs> um, God. So then Poorly. that guy, uh, that guy burned to ash. Um, uh, Regani showed up. Burned us to ash. Yeah. Burned us to ash. Seventy-one hit points uh, worth of fire damage across everybody. Um, I almost died. Harold almost died. Um, Mabel did die. Bruce was barely alive. A bunch of people were injured in the shaded lilies. Um, and then we went into the uh, sad downtime moments of, uh, you know, previously explained, uh, you know, talking to people, funerals, and stuff like that. Yeah. And Last Bruce week was did a not downtime. come to the funeral. Yeah, and Bruce did not come right to now. the funeral, very specifically. <laughs> and, yeah, there was a a box, a safety, <laughs> key to the safety deposit box. Wilhelm is... I think jumped into the water. Mm. No, I didn't. I'm at the top of the lighthouse. You guys thought. Oh right, we thought yeah, I was gonna right. jump. <laughs> and uh, oh, and Copper was uh, following Wilhelm. That's right. Pip was following. Pip was Wilhelm. following Wilhelm. Copper. Just, somebody was. Uh, fucked somebody up was following the Wilhelm. Change the meatball into a chicken wing. Yep. Turn your mom and your sister and. Uh... Right. <laughs> Sorry. Some Copper look. A lot of out. shit happened yeah. last week. Yeah, there was a lot that happened last week. Let's go so, watch it. What are we doing here? Let's go uh, watch it. It's everywhere. It's on YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube. What do I, what do I anyway. get to waste? What, why am I wasting all these people's nice time? Because Adelaide decided to go to a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> this what, we, we had this done in like 35 seconds if she was around. True. So. We open to a cold night in Kazmar. The rocks that make up a large portion of the bay of Kazmar has these soft waves that lick up onto it and kind of rush back and play around at the base of this cliff. At the top is a tall lighthouse, the light occasionally spinning by in rhythmic fashion. Sitting atop it, on one of those just typical metal grates, one of those metal walkways, is a lone figure. His hazel eyes burning through the night as he looks up at the sky and just says, I'm here to talk. In the distance, we hear a soft thoom, thoom, thoom. Make an intelligence check for me, Wilhelm. I do think it's important that he did not just say, I'm here to talk. <laughs> yeah, I know. He specifically said, <clears throat> what did you say, Wilhelm? Something about burning hate? Yeah. <laughs> something, about burning, <laughs> so, something about burning man? Yeah, get rid of the, the burning hate. Yeah. And also my eyes aren't hazel, the toe pass, but now we're just being pedantic. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's a 15, sir. With a 15, the ricochet of the sound bouncing off of the walls and these rock, uh, this rock wall indicates that they are not coming from behind you towards the city, but rather over the ocean itself. Okay. And it takes a few moments before you hear a soft thud kind of land on the other side of the lighthouse. The metal clanking underfoot as a black 
plate mail clad figure steps into view, bits of blue kind of streaking through different parts of the armor and very zigzag natured. So Wilhelm would be, or I, I guess we, I could say, be just. I'm just looking over the railing. Still, that's the ocean. I haven't even addressed the fact that they are there. And without looking at them, I will say, you ever just, you ever just look at the water here, waves. At night, it reflects the sky. It's almost perfect opening of darkness. But every once in a while, the light will hit one of these waves, and it's just like silver white strands across. It's uh, it is amazing to me that at any point they could just rise up, brush rocks. They don't. It's a just gentle wash, dashing themselves against them. Wiping away the imperfections. This preserved strength. <laughs> Just selflessness. Reminds me of someone. Sorry. There's no response. Just staring, you hear kind of like the clinking of metal on metal as the head tilt, uh, tilts down and looks down at the waves as you speak. Well, I did not call you here to wax poetic, I promise you. Uh, last we spoke, you mentioned to me something about the burning hate. And from what I am aware, prior to being my guide, it was yours. What do I call you, by the way? Is this Blue Streak? Is it Alhora Alley? The gauntleted hands grab a hold of the rail as the Blue Streak kind of leans forward onto him for a moment. <clears throat> And rather than the robotic voice that you heard from the box, it's a thin, almost raspy whisper that you have to kind of strain to hear. You can uh, call me Allie, please. Oh, Allie. Dealt with this once, yes. And now he, he kind of turns from the ocean and leans back on the rail as he's having this casual conversation. I have a few times. I can't imagine a better being in this circumstance to uh, offer me insight as to how to deal with it. She turns to kind of almost match her lean on the rail. <clears throat> you could say you're right, though I don't think you would like the result. I'm, I'm listening. There's no listening. Observing 
is the key. An understanding of self is more important. Self-observation, self-realization is the key to removing him. You talk about selflessness. You have to be just as selfish as he is to oppose him. Good, because I, <laughs> I think I should be a little more clear at this point. And, I, and at this point, Wilhelm takes out this silver cigarette case it's had many times. Flips it up, open, reads something on the inside, shuts it again. I am... My friends, my friends are actively working to rid me of this curse. And I believe wholeheartedly that given time, Harold will figure this out. He always does. There's no one better to do. But between you and me, I am not looking to myself of Regani's flames. Flicks the cigarette case over the side of the lighthouse. I'm looking to take them from him. Would you like to see the results of taking his fire? Well, if observation is key. And you watch as the blue street kind of straightens up for a moment, clicks the heels together with a loud clang as the plate begins to and almost like individual plates begin to open up around the face and begin going down all the way across the figure until <clears throat> Alhora is standing there, all six foot, two of her. Her feet completely metallic underneath her, dressed in ratty blue jeans and a white tank top. But her flesh is awful. It looks terrible. Remind me, has Wilhelm actually seen Alhora in her adult? No, self? only only in the dreams. Okay. So he remembers seeing on the uh, whenever they had their pizza date, seeing these scars going across her eyes down into her hairline. That looked like they are almost like a necrotic electricity had burned through. That now covers the entirety of her face going down, snaking around her neck, down underneath the, the, uh, the neckline. And you can see on her now, her now bare arms, the little bit of flesh that is there is incredibly pale, almost a good quarter inch deep throughout her flesh. In order to match his selfishness. You have to nearly lose yourself. Whenever I lost him, whenever I rid myself of him, and she kind of like leans onto that rail again, and the arm is frail, surprisingly frail for the amount of work you've heard her put in as the blue streak. I didn't have something to hold on to until it was too late. My selfishness was all out of personal need rather than actual caring for another. And it ruined me. She fishes around and she pulls out this tattered clutch that's white with this almost cyan green colored 
half snowflake on it. She snaps it open and she pulls out another box. About an inch and inch by an inch. She offers it to you. She snaps the clutch colt. Uh, closed. I'll take it. Whenever you find something to hold on to, that will open. We'll talk again then. And she clang, the heels back together, and the metal begins to clack, 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 clack until it covers her form again. And for a moment, there's just a, a suit of black armor before it, as the blue parts begin to glow that soft blue again. Until then. Be well, Wilhelm. It's fair, Ali. <laughs> she grabs and she like stands up and gets on the other side of the rail and just falls off. Before you can hear the <laughs> she takes off. The water kind of erupting out in big wake below. I will turn with the box in my hand, kind of spin it over and over again as I just stare at the, the waves for probably a few more hours. Um, off your own curiosity, it is completely sealed. There doesn't seem to be any sort of latch. There doesn't seem to be any sort of way to open it. Size, off maybe. Couple inches, or mm -hmm. inch by an inch, oh, by an inch. Very small. Mm -hmm. No need, no need to be so serious. It's gonna open like tomorrow, whenever he runs into Pip and Beta. Just, just Pip. Come on now. <laughs> I didn't want to be selfish. <laughs> If you wake up, Ragani is outside your house. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you little froggy bastard. <laughs> you wake up in the middle of the night to a sound at the Finwild's fabulous fineries. Home. Oh. Sounds like somebody's rustling around in the kitchen. Copper will very carefully, quietly uh, get out of bed and sort of like peek around the corner just to make see. A, make a stealth check. Okay. That's a... A 10. He's very sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> Make a perception check. Uh, seven, seventeen. <clears throat> the seventeen before you even get in there, you know that Irvin's around. Yeah, you you've met him once as mm -hmm. electric boy. But as you kind of like go down the hallway and peek around the corner into that kitchen, you can see uh, in what little bit of pale moonlight that comes through the window in the kitchen uh, illuminates the cabinet that holds the pylon is open. And you can hear one of the cabinets close and the crinkling of a bag. And as you kind of peek around the corner, sure enough, there he is. Six foot tall. Blue boy dressed in blue jeans and a blue hoodie. Kind of tattered, darker blue lightning scars across his skin, digging into marshmallows. Sitting on the counter. Oh, like red eyes. Just... You're back. Hey. Hi. So... I'm uh, sleeping here for now. That's great. Is it? Like, I think it is. 
I'm assuming they gave you my bed. Yeah, I found all the blue clothes. Mm. I may have borrowed a couple sweaters. Reasonable. It's kind of chilly out here on the docks. Yeah, I'll wash them for you if you want. I'll, okay. I'll make sure they're clean, but anyway. Ellie and I always just press the digitated them clean, so they may actually be a smell. Oh. Good luck. Okay. Well, glad it's just you. Hey. Yeah. Check on Wilhelm. Let me get a minute. Is that like urgent, like now? No, just later. All right. Allie's a little concerned. So. Oh, okay. Who's Allie? That's my wife. In the purple crystal, you know, that surrounds everything. Yeah. 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 I didn't know you were married. That's that's great for you they really didn't tell you much did they no no i don't know anything <sighs> if i'm honest can't beat them all i guess yeah i mean i figure i'll figure it out as i go right you think so you would think so but yeah you know. it's just getting more confusing right now do you have any questions oh Okay, well, because some stuff happened and, like, Harold was down and then Veda was, like, he's with her. Like, is that, that's the same part, that's your wife? Mm-hmm. That helps me connect a lot of dots, actually. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I, I mean, I'll let you know. Are you going to be around? I don't know. I mean, yes and no. Like, I can find somewhere else to sleep if, like, you want your bed. Back. No, you're good. I can just, I can just, and he, like, raises a hand and it becomes electricity and says, I can just do this now. So it's fine. I don't really sleep whenever I'm like this. Oh, okay. And that makes it, sense. And I, I want you to know, and I mean this in the nicest way possible, this conversation is very, very, very slow for me. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Well, I'm pretty tired, so I might just go back to bed then. No, it's not supposed to. Not um, like you're not like you're slow. Not, no, I didn't mean it like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I know, but you're fast, and so I seem slow to you, and that that makes sense. Well, it's not like what you think. Okay. Like you sound like this. That's that's pretty funny, actually. It is for about five minutes, and then it's really yeah. annoying. And yeah. five minutes my time, not five minutes your time. I don't even know how that... I don't even know what that means. Can I have a marshmallow or a handful? He just tosses you, a <laughs> he just tosses you the open bag, and a couple kind of like <laughs> fall out. And he's like, well, that wasn't on purpose. And he just pulls another bag out and opens it up. How many are in there? In the, in the cabinet? How many bags... <laughs> It like the entire bottom shelf is just full of them. Well, it's nice to have you back. See you again. I'm gonna go finish sleeping so I can check on Wilhelm. Right. Yeah. yeah. Cause I sleep. Right, sorry, I didn't. Yeah, I'm, that was really rude of me. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. No, um, I mean, have a good anyway. night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, as all of you get your full rest. In. Go ahead and click on those buttons from this very harrowing, you know, week. Congratulations. <sighs> Is there anything else that anybody would like to handle before we go to the bank? And is everybody going to the bank, or is it just Mac and Pip? I am only calling Pip 
and telling him to meet me at the downtown bank. Pip, are you going to t- do that, or is anybody else going to? I mean, yeah, I think uh, I think Fear the Dragon is like, yep, gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you say? You're going to meet him at the downtown bank? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that one is full of action that we don't need right now. Right. It's the second, <laughs> second, second, second national downtime. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, as the two of you make your way downtown, anyway. is there anything you guys want to talk about or want to do before you get there? No, I'm I'm very focused on what needs to happen. I've got a safety deposit key. Made sure I've got the little black card with the uh, Vapors logo on it. Triple checked all that. And uh, yeah, just uh, I don't know what condition the truck's in because it was set on fire. Uh, so yeah, I'm just taking the train. And Oh, the your cab. truck is fine. Oh, it is? Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, haven't, haven't touched it. So um, still taking the train. Give me, give mm-hmm. me some credit, man. Take everything you love. It wasn't your f- well. It was kind of your fault. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, yeah. Is we've already we've there? already determined the whole thing was Harold's fault. <laughs> Why are we even having? No, nothing not extra wrong. for Pip. Ray is stopping in like a random shop or two, doing some last minute shopping, grabbing a bagel. I will okay. stop for some coffee. Um, are you guys trying to use the account that you just set up? Nope. Wait, no, like what? The one that you I thought, I thought, we're, still, I thought we're still going to. No, to with Gerby. I'm not. No, I just, I just. I just have a little bit of money on me. Okay, cool. Great. Wonderful. What do we just buy with Gerby? Thing, if you're buying the things that you have on your list, Dylan. This is at the end of the week, right? Yeah, but this is going to be expensive, so we're going to need to talk about pricing on some of those things at some point. Yeah, I thought, I thought you just I, said we did it, and like, you, you know, later you'll tell me how much I have left. <laughs> See, I thought you were waiting to do the shopping trip until yeah, after me, the bank. Me too. Okay, that's fine. So as you I'm all head downtown, coming I'm from the grayscale... Yeah, he's the boss. I don't know why he's asking us. Listen, I just want to know what you guys are doing. I, mean, I, I was talking like, you know, get a bagel. Okay. I'm getting some coffee. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Uh, so, as you guys make it uh, make your way into the golden streets of downtown, all the light kind of, uh, the artificial light reflecting off of the gilding of the buildings all around, eventually you come to a rather large building that takes up an entire block by itself. Second National Bank of Downtime of Kazmar. As you step into the building, it is white and black marble floors lined with bits of silver, copper, gold. The walls have different kind of wainscoting that match a variety of different colors blue red black green so forth small desks kind of line one wall where there's a bit of a a glass between you and the tellers and individual large vault doors behind each one Counting them out, there are 10 different vault doors in this space. Is there anybody that is not a teller, like somebody like at a desk, a welcome table, uh, yeah, somebody that, like waiting there's for probably, someone? <laughs> there's probably a handful of different desks that are kind of out in the open where there are a couple people sitting, waiting, that kind of thing. There's a, there's a, uh, like a, uh, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Like a kiosk in the center of it that has, uh, you know, 10 different slices across that are all different colored um, with, you know, forms that you can fill out for a variety of different deposits, opening of accounts, that sort of thing. What are you looking for? Um, uh, as, as we walk in. Mac, Mac what, what are we doing here? Did she tell you we have to rob this place? Cause like, we gotta just did, did, no, 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 no. Shh, 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 shh. No. no. No, no. This is something a little bit different. What we need to do is we need to go to one of these fine people and ask for a private room. Uh, that we can discuss things in with a uh, with one of the financial people here. So uh, <clears throat> I'll step up to just one of the desks. Um, uh, nah, excuse me. Uh, stepping up to the desk, you find yourself in front of a black dragonborn at a table. Uh, his frills kind of going out and up before they can turn into the horns that kind of curve back and over to a point. They almost join at the back, but not quite. Uh, you can see a bit of a beard coming off uh, off of his scales as he's sitting there writing. He uh, removes his monocle and looks up. Yes? Uh, hi there. Uh, I'm not entirely sure who we need to speak to, but uh, we would like a private room uh, to speak to one of the financial representatives here. Uh, it's about uh, my my charges. I'm, I'm the bodyguard and person responsible for this individual. Mm. And uh, also, we have a safety deposit box to also uh look into he like puts the monocle back in and kind of squints it Yep. hi hello um yes of course uh is there a particular color you're looking for i'm sorry i'm assuming you're wanting to speak with someone in a particular bank um white probably yes and i pull out the card and show it to him with the vapors uh, as he goes to turn away you pull out the card and he looks at it and his head like snaps like it's almost like he almost rubbernecks over as he this is why we need privacy sir do you mind if i see that for a second absolutely and he takes it and he watches it. his monocle like begins to shift in color like the lens itself begins to shift through a variety of different colors oh yeah Vanessa and uh, you see this white dragonborn uh, kind of sitting uh, sitting a few desks away uh, her wings are kind of pushed back underneath uh, what little bit of jacket is there but you can see them bulging and she's not sitting on a typical chair she's just sitting on a stool currently with someone and she just goes yes we have a card and she interesting i'll be with you in just a moment uh if you don't mind sitting nearby for uh she looks back at the couple that's in front of her and you can see that they're uh, they look like they're in the middle of something and they look very annoyed at the fact that they're being interrupted i just kind of smile at the couple and say like, yeah we'll just be uh, right over here right thank you so much she kind of goes back to what she's doing for a bit matt yeah you, you'd tell me if she was gonna lock me in a vault right no, she's not going to do that. Actually, it's quite the opposite. Uh, see that card that I gave him? Uh, ah. that's, that's got your grandmother's uh, symbol on it. Uh, ah. They know exactly who they're dealing with right now. Okay, right. Yeah, I mean, she gets whatever she wants, including humans, like people in a fault. Um, not exactly. It's It's a little bit more interesting than that. Uh, turns out that you may be eligible for some kind of uh, inheritance or something along those lines. All she told me is that I'm to take you to a bank. We're supposed to show them this. Uh, they will discuss what uh, you're able to get to. And uh, yeah, you got to be responsible for it, though. That's why she gave me the job to protect you and to bring you here. I didn't want to tell anybody else that because it was kind of 
it's it's what your grandmother and I talked about when everyone else left the room. Okay. I'll keep you safe, buddy. Don't worry. It takes uh, maybe another 15, 20 minutes sitting here waiting for Miss Vanessa to finish what she's doing. Must not be that big of a deal, see? Maybe, maybe we both get to walk out of here. And as she approaches, she just kind of, she, you know, shakes hands, smiles wide, the grin coming up almost to her, uh, like, almost all the way up to in the back of her head. And she just kind of sits there for a second and watches them walk. And she turns back to you, wide-eyed. Okay. Let's go. And she puts her hand out. After you, Pip. It's your grandmother that sent us here, and I just look at Vanessa. I'm... I need the card. Oh, yeah, I th- sorry. I thought the other gentleman gave it to you. My, my mistake. Here you go. She takes it and kind of looks at it for a few moments. And if her scales could get any more white, they would. And she just kind of holds it delicately in hand. Follow me. And uh, she begins kind of leading you behind the counters and goes up to one of the large vault doors where there is a bunch of uh, like crystal motifs, white kind of going along. The actual door itself isn't even made of gold or any sort of material that looks like it's of any other feature other than maybe ice. And she breathes onto her hand for a moment and you can see the frost kind of like beginning to gather around her palm before she touches the door as it begins to and and begins to open uh, slowly. The process takes a good five minutes as she just proceeds to touch in a variety of different places before it finally begins to creak open. As that's going on, I'm just casually looking around, seeing if anyone's trying to clock us or the vault door or Pip or anything. Pip, Pip is also looking around, probably very not. Like, like, like what the hell? <laughs> Did anybody see this? <laughs> Make perception checks, please. Sure. 13. <laughs> oh, God. At least I'm fucking plus five of uh, oh, 15 plus 5, 20. 20? Looking around the room, there are multiple recorbs around the entire space. There's not a single inch of this space that does not have a recorb facing it. Um, you also clock that the one that's facing you from a certain angle, however, is off. Being an owner of Recorbs at your space, you would know that normally oh. they're blue. This one has turned red. Oh, fascinating. And as, and as you're kind of looking around for a moment, there is a white dragonborn in a trench coat leaning against a pillar in the middle of the room. And as you, as the, like in, in the process of all this, the trilby kind of peeks up as one of the kobolds. Hey, watching you. Just kind of very gently nod. Pip, you catch them as well because you're used to it at this point. And as the door opens, another set of kobolds comes out from around another corner in their trench coats. Mm hmm. And you catch that they aren't quite the same white with brown reticulations, but rather silver with black oh. knots across their arms. As you're watching them just kind of like adjust various different parts, you watch as one of the arms slips out to grab a hold of something up top and pull something out of a pocket as you can see these black knobs along the edges. Before it comes back down into the coat. Do the white kobolds notice the silver ones? 
Make an insight check. Sir, oh. Vanessa, what's uh This is pretty impressive. What's security like here? Oh, <laughs> it, there's a lot, uh, to say the least. Um, That's cool. Uh, do not ever touch one of these vault doors. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> you do not have to tell me twice. <sighs> so since it's not being evasive or dishonest, I don't get my full plus eight. I only get plus four. So that's a total of 16. Well, the 16, mm -hmm. the white ones have not clocked the silvers, but the silvers have clocked the whites. Are the are the white ones looking at me at all? Can is there eye contact? Uh, because I'm big. <laughs> yes and no. They catch you every once in a while, but like they're they're trying to be evasive and watching okay. you. They're trying to make it look like they aren't watching you. I'm just gonna kind of like you know just like because we're standing there for like five minutes. I'm just gonna kind of stretch, roll my roll my neck, and the moment one of the uh, white ones look, I'll just kind of look at him glance toward the silver ones and roll my neck that way. Okay. As you do and kind of like roll your head that way, they you watch as they look across the room. Don't really seem to do anything about it. Okay. As the door opens... You are met with a rush of cold air. Colder than the mountaintop. And as it opens, there is a moment before you can see orbs coming off of small sconces on either side of a long hallway that kind of goes a good 30 feet before going almost straight down. The orbs begin to kind of rotate around the beginning of this long hallway as Vanessa steps in. Just assume we follow you. <laughs> yeah, this is his first time here, so anything you'd like to explain for future visits it would be uh, very helpful. Right. Um, assuming that this isn't a one-time trip, you'll need that card, uh, this card, and she kind of holds it in place every time you want to come in. Mm -hmm. um, we will issue you your own card that you can use throughout Casma once all things are said and done, and she puts it into a pocket uh, up front. Uh, next time, we will provide you with uh, a bit more comfort now that we know that you exist. Um, and there will be questions asked between now and then to verify some of the information. Um, and now that you have handed me this card, we will be keeping track of you until uh, things are verified. It's understandable. It's like, like everywhere or like while we're here? Everywhere. See, Pip, it's important for people that are attached to such grand wealth that they look out for both you and the wealth itself. Uh -huh. Now then, if either of you leave our uh, senses, our sensors at any time, please be aware that we will be dispatching authorities uh, ordained by the vapor. Of course. Okay. Cool. Now we have an understanding. That's that's and, uh, exactly what I was expecting. As she steps into the room and she begins leading you down into this space, you begin to realize that there are a lot of tunnels down here. As you can occasionally see a small white face with uh, kind of poke out from uh, uh, different holes. You can see a variety of different secondary ice doors lining this hallway as she leads you down into the space. Now then, please be aware that you're not to uh, address the kobolds down here, otherwise they may uh, they have every right to do whatever they feel necessary uh, to keep you away from any doors. If you do not have me with you, or you do not have Maxwell with you, 
he is the other white uh, dragonborn, you will be likely stopped fairly quickly upon entry. Makes sense. And, uh, do you have any other questions, Pipped Up? Nope. Ulysses? Oh no, I'm fine. I was I was just tasked to make sure he gets here, gets here, gets what he deserves, and sure. leaves safely. And uh, there's a moment where your ears pop as you that. continue further, going deeper and deeper and deeper into the space. Make a survival check. Okay, that's gonna suck. That sucks. And I feel like every time I go to the bank, it's a freaking survival check. 16. Three. The 16? Is that what you're cashing when you're there? A survival check? <laughs> yes, for um, my, my long stint on the, on, on the show Survivor. It. Yep. You realize that you are moving directly towards the mountain. And after about a good 30 minutes, instead of going down, it actually begins to slope a little bit upward. She stops you about 45 minutes into your walk. Jesus. <laughs> it's a trip. Just door. I'm glad I brought after, a bagel. <laughs> door after door after door. I need both of you to make constitution saving throws, please. Oh, man. You gotta bring a coat. <laughs> I do have a coat. Make a different dice. 12. Uh, do, you, do you have winter gear? No. No, I'm covered in fur and I have a coat, though. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. That was a 12, 15 total. Okay. 14. 14. Pip, you take a point of exhaustion. Uh, Solid. Max, Max succeeds. <laughs> Before she stops at a small door. Uh, and she kind of looks around for a moment, checks the card again. Step back, please. And she begins to into her hand again as it begins to ice over. She reaches out and touches the door as it begins to go through another five minute sequence. Jesus. Oh, it's a good, good time to take a drink of water. Yum, yum. It's, it's, like sip <laughs> it's fresh. Sipping on the, on the coffee, it's like an ice cube. It's like, oh shit. This is frozen. <laughs> Licking my coffee ice cube. The door opens and she steps aside. She says, Pip, you may step in. Okay, Matt, thanks. you must stay out, please. That's understandable. You're not going to get locked in there, buddy. I can guarantee. I'll be right here, and so will <laughs> Vanessa. Just walk him in. As soon as you step in the door, the door closes <laughs> and begins to go through the whole process from the interior, <laughs> locking you in. <laughs> And she she looks at you, Mac, and just goes, "It's all part of the process. Please understand, he must have privacy." Oh yeah, no, I I completely understand. Uh, again, we're I I was under direct orders from uh, Ms. Vapor, so uh, yeah. Sure. Got a dagger in my hand. <laughs> uh, <see> but, <laughs> yeah. Do I talk yeah. to you about this safety deposit key, or is that just a little bit later? Oh, that will handle that. Afterwards. Yeah, that, it's just gonna be nothing. Um, Pip, as you step into the room, it is, as the door closes, it is significantly warmer. As <laughs> fires begin to light around this large, empty space. Vaulted ceiling goes up probably a good 15, 20 feet. And in the center of the room is a small pedestal made of what looks like crystal gripping the ground almost tearing into it what little bit of metal there is here you can see some sort of design underneath but it's just dis the distracting thing is a small object wrapped in cloth hovering above that 
uh, above that pedestal. Checking for traps. <laughs> Roll the investigation check. So, Vanessa, do you find it difficult to date because you're, like, working at a bank and all that? Well, it depends on what you call dating. A lot of the time I find that uh, most people find it intimidating that I have such close connections to the Crystal Vapor. So, yeah, no, that, that makes sense. That and, you know, not everybody wants to deal with people like myself. Uh, believe me, I understand. I'm a cop, so, you know, a detective, but you know what I mean. What'd you get, Pip? 30. Jesus Christ! 30. 30. <laughs> <laughs> it's the dumbest time ever for <laughs> Okay, so as you're kind of looking around the room, watching Time itself is not step, trapped. The entire room is a trap. Make an Arcana check, please. Eight. 30's got to give him advantage, no? <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'll give you advantage on a 30. After a 30, that's a good point. Thank you, Justin. Same roll. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> um, Looking around the space... Sitting on some inspiration there, buddy? It <laughs> <laughs> was like... Just beginning to cry. <laughs> Tears start. <laughs> this is my life. <laughs> Mac betrayed me. There's I mean, just a trap. I can never leave. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. She didn't even give me a bed. <laughs> <laughs> there are lines that are making concentric circles around this platform uh, that are magically imbued, but you're not sure what they do. And you can see that there is a matching set of circles on the ceiling, and that vaulted ceiling. Is that the only thing in the room? The pedestal, yes. Okay. I walk back to the door real quick. Okay. Knock, knock, knock. Can I take the thing? Mac, you barely hear it. Ping, ping, ping. Uh, Vanessa, I think he's got a question. Do, do I take the thing? <sighs> Hold on just a minute. This is a bit more difficult than is necessary in these spaces, in my opinion. And she goes over next to the door and begins, like, drawing into the snow and the ice for a moment. And she begins making a glyph before it <sighs> becomes crystal clear. What? Do I take the thing and then I get the bed or, like... You, you can come out as long as you just let me know you'd like out. You can take the thing if you'd like. Or, I don't okay. know what the thing is. I don't know what's in there. Okay. Okay. And then the this ice begins. It. The ice begins to encroach before it. This is just cruel. They don't even know what they're doing. I'll go investigate the thing. Take the sheet. It's like cold. <laughs> Are you taking the thing? I'll go look at it. See what it is. So it's yeah, I over. guess. If Stepping I, over the first line, it. you feel like goosebumps go across your skin. As you feel something activate, and as you step past it, nothing happens. You step over the third, or the second. Numbers, go over the second. <laughs> Same thing. Goosebumps across your body. Before you step over the third, which is like almost basically right next to it. Okay. Not dead yet. Let's take the thing. Boop. As you take the thing, boop, I need you to... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, boop. I, 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 Pip gets booped for 71 points of damage. Yep. <laughs> How and many hit points do you have? Ooh. Not as you grab a hold of the kill rules, <laughs> as you grab a hold of the object that floats Boop. over the top of this pedestal, your fingers <laughs> feel something sharp underneath. It's probably about oh, I'd say a good, not quite a foot long, but you can feel a few spikes kind of on something that gives. 
And as you grab a hold of it and kind of pull it towards you, the cloth begins to disappear in a soft vapor. As you hold what looks like the grip of a weapon that has a leather bend that goes, like a leather piece that goes over the top of the knuckles with crystalline spikes poking off of it. And on either end, you can see all the way through the tube in your hand. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. Okay, check it for like straight, like true, and mm-hmm. just really give it a good look over. And I will also like with it in my hand, like just take a step back over the circle. It turns red. Take another step back. It stays red. Take another step back. It's still red. Past the second circle. The second circle turns red and you can see steam coming off the pedestal. As I step out of the circles. As you step out of the circles, you, there is a notable change in temperature as the room becomes very warm and the pedestal melts into a small puddle that turns into steam just, rising just, up in the room. Just the red stop? No. I think I'm gonna start melting now. Please open the door. <laughs> and she blows into her hand, the ice kind of coalescing around it just as she the whole touches time. the door. It takes five minutes of him knocking <laughs> and before it opens up with a as you feel that steam kind of rush over the top of you, Mac, it's like standing outside of a sauna. Certainly made it comfortable for you in there, huh? It's so hot, but it's so cold out here. So? Like, welcome gotta, to being a I, rich frog, I guess. I got a gift. It's just a gift. A what? I, I don't know. It's a gift. I, I think I think it's a blowgun. Okay. It's pretty cool. Well, I mean, she 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 told me you wouldn't have to worry about like things like wealth and all that anymore. So I was anticipating that like you know there'd be like a pile of something. And is uh, Vanessa? Is there an account connected to this as well that he can access? I, I don't know what's going on. I would assume as much. I can go check whenever we get up topside. Yeah, probably. But hey, you know that that's a gift from Grandma, and there's probably something. Grandma. You know, like... yeah. uh, before before I exit the room, now that the door's open and the panic has subsided a little bit, I just take a look back. Now that things are melting, um, anything else in the room of note? Make a perception check. Six or nine. Six or nine. And yeah, Grandma, he's kind of adopted into the family. Thirteen. Thirteen? No. Yeah. Okay. You notice that the rings have stopped glowing red. Cool. Cool. Sweet. That's weird. And she just kind of puts her hands in her pockets and just starts marching her way back up. Do you know now what you're... this is? No idea. Okay. Thanks. Does it feel sturdy? Yes. Okay. Like, it's, it's not, like, made of ice that's just going to shatter if I maneuver it. No. Okay. You can see, like, looking through the interior, it's made of uh, what looks like a, uh, like, almost a white metal with okay. wrapped in, in, like, silver uh, leather with that leather strip that goes over the top with the crystals, and, like, the crystal spikes on top of the wrap. Kind of looks like a punch dagger so, or something. Like a, you know, like Wilhelm's Knuckles. So, they're like barbs and they're silvery. They're silvery <laughs> barbs. <laughs> I'm the Ow. only one I'm the only one that gets a Strixhaven spell. <laughs> My eyes physically hurt from that eye roll. Uh can I attune on the way out? <laughs> sure. 
<laughs> There's like an, about an hour. hour. Long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will also put it in the in the holster mm. and put my cloak over it so it's not visible. Okay. Oh, what's the game? Some people. Uh, give me just a second, and I'll slip it over on your shit. There you go, Pip. Feel free to look that over for a second. As you all exit out into, uh, as you begin making your way through this tunnel again, kind of a grueling uh, take. I need both of you to make constitution saving throws again, please. That one's so better. As Ragani, so as Ragani's fiery blaze engulfs you. <laughs> it's uh, no, it's, it's, it's a whole different. It's a whole different Will Helm. Part two. It's nine. <laughs> Nine, two points of exhaustion. Good luck. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> Especially because we might have a fight after this. Massive, extremely <laughs> dangerous, ancient, ancient <laughs> entity that just follows you around. <laughs> and now you, now, you, now you can punch things real good. Do, 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 do. I'm so proud. Please note the change in attitude. Hi, Vanessa. Yep. Oh. Um, stepping up into that, uh, back up into the bank uh, itself. I don't have anything. Where'd you put it? It's in your inventory. Oh, okay, thank you. Under I, weapons. Thank you. Gotcha. It's just above. Yeah, no, I see it. Yeah. I see it now. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I think I was just scrolling too fast. <laughs> You're too excited. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Oh. It has become a man. <laughs> I'm waiting for the... Oh! Oh. 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 She <laughs> leads you out of the vault and closes it behind you all before leading you out from behind this, uh, in this space to a large wall uh, that is behind a set of bars. And she just opens up part of the gate too as they begin to shift apart. Um, walking over, she asks you for the key. Hand it to her. She takes the key and, and kind of looks at it for a moment, and you can see uh, her eyes flashing that same color as it goes through a, seri uh, a series of numbers or a series of colors. Mm, interesting. It goes down uh, about a third of the way down the wall, and she begins to. <sighs> levitate upward as the wings kind of flex outward for a second before she slides it in opens up a small safety deposit box and pulls out a small package and she closes it back up pulls it out and begins dropping back down hands you both the key and the package oh well uh thank you kindly i don't mean to uh you know take up any any more time we can go to a uh, tell her to ask for uh, you know Pip's access card and all that. Unless that's still something you do, I can check. Considering he is family, yeah. You don't mind. Probably don't want the non tell us to take care of it. And she leads you back over to the desk, and she pulls out uh, basically a rolodex. And she begins. <laughs> flipping through it. It almost seems infinite as it begins to spin through before she pulls out a card and sets it down and slides it across. It looks almost identical to the other one, except you can see a small word set of words down in the bottom left-hand corner as it just says picked up. Black has the big C V in the center and then picked up in the corner. Right, I'm assuming you just like hand that to a teller or something like that when you come in. You need uh, some spending cash and all that. Yeah. This is based on credit, not. Oh, this is credit. Okay, no, and that makes sense now. So yeah, so Pip, definitely be careful with this. You can actually present that at a uh, at vendors uh, to purchase things, and then you'll have to pay it back at some point. There's probably like you know a little bit of interest stuff like that what if what if would i don't you, go back to that vendor would you like me to check the limit on it yeah if you don't mind 
Okay, and she begins kind of like uh, she reaches into a uh, a portion of her desk and pulls out a file and begins kind of looking through what looks like blank papers. You don't go back to the vendor, Pip. Like whatever you spend, then you pay the bank, or in this case, they're lending you the money and then you give it back at some point when you. Okay, sure. If I I go to the vendor, get anything I want, give this card, and then like it's free as long as I don't go back. No, no, you got to pay. So if they say that'll cost a thousand notes, That's give them the card and they'll be like, okay, now you have to pay that thousand notes back to the card over time. Yeah, but like if, every, the, if the shop can't find me, then they can't like ask. No, me no, the, the card, the card she, will find you. She writes a number down on a piece of paper, folds it and slips it over to you. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Uh, why? <laughs> why do you have planned for that? Why? Oh, Pip, that that's your limit. You can't spend more than that. <laughs> right? Okay. But don't go crazy, because remember, whatever you spend, you have to pay back. Or grandma's going to get really mad. Can we continue what? this conversation elsewhere? I have other things I need to handle. Oh, yeah, no, of I, course. I, uh, what, yes, what, thank you very- I, have, I have one quick question, Vanessa. Mm-hmm. What forms of currency do you take to pay that back? Notes. Coins, if you have them. Okay, cool. Well, I've got like three electrums, so that's obviously going to cover whatever that is. So Well, um... That will cover three electrum worth. I, I know it's a lot. It's pretty shocking. No, and I I don't even know anybody else that carries electrum. I probably should put it in the bank, but it's kind of cool supposed to exchange to that at the casino for real gold notes, right? What do, what do you mean real gold notes? Like the gold notes. Uh, is it just like most shops don't have enough goods to cover an electrum? So Vanessa, uh, thank you very much. Um, I'll, I'll tell him the intricacies of the landing acts and uh, interest and stuff, all that. Um, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for your help with the uh, security deposit. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you kindly. If you ever need anything, uh, just you know, of a more investigation nature, just contact Weatherford Hole Investigation and uh, be happy to help. And. Hey, Josephine, you got a minute? As you guys, like, get up to walk away. <laughs> Wait, uh, didn't you have a thing and a key? Oh, no, I got it. It's all good. Oh, I was, I was distracted. What'd you get? I don't know yet. I'm just going to go open it somewhere else. Oh, just you just got a box? Yeah. Cool. Are we... Like I, I'm like looking at Vanessa and Josephine. Are they meaning to talk to us? Oh no, or... no, no! They're like she okay, got yeah. up from her desk as you guys yeah. left, and yeah. she went so, to yeah. go gossip. Cool. Um, and then <laughs> as, as as we're leaving, <laughs> I am trying to see if the silver kobolds are anywhere. Yeah, what's the Casual. kobold situation? Make a perception check, please. Both of us. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. That'll be Let's another. Oh no, that's six a nine kobolds. 15. 15 and what, Trevor? 19. 19? Neither of them are in here. Though you okay. do notice that there are a couple different sets of kobolds in here now. You can see a gold set of kobolds sitting in a corner waiting for some, uh, waiting for a, to- uh, for a teller of sorts. And you can see a black set of kobolds uh, kind of meandering through the line trying to get to the front. All right. Right. Um, let's uh, let's find everybody else. I guess see what we're gonna do about figuring out what happened earlier in the week and all that. So uh, I don't know. Should we go back to the office? Yeah, or sure. The, I, I meant the the other office. The, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna meet everybody. Yeah. And you know, speaking of like, it's been it's been like a week. Yeah. You're gonna be cool with Wilhelm. 
I haven't decided on that yet. Okay. For what it's worth, it wasn't him. I don't know. Okay. But there were a lot of people that got hurt. Yeah, I can. I can happen with any of us, though. We've had some yeah. fights and some crowds and explosions go off around us, and just because he was the biggest explosion doesn't mean it wasn't a calculated risk, you know? Pip, it's kind of like using a tool. You know how you use your blow guns and whatever that new thing is? Yeah. If you lose control of your tool and it hurts other people, you're still responsible for it. Yeah, kind of. But this is more like, you know, you're hanging out with me and then grandma shows up and ices a bunch of people. Like, yeah, te technically, I guess I'm responsible because I'm around, but I, don't, I can't really control the powerful entity that is apparently very interesting. You got no, a I'm, point, yeah. but yeah, no, I'm sure we'll like, figure I'm, it out. I'm benefiting from the relationship. Yeah. Okay. So do you think everybody's in uh, back at the dome or back at the office? I don't know. Let's call somebody. Uh, shit. Um, see where, see where Copper is. Maybe. Gotta watch out for him too. Copper yeah. has no way to be contacted other than finding him. <laughs> oh well, the uh, we have uh, sending stones on our. Which is Copper's there. job. Does not so. have one. <laughs> yeah, Copper doesn't have one. <laughs> <laughs> right, so copper There's can't no call us. There's no other way to get in touch with copper other than finding <laughs> copper and finding we can, people's copper's job. We can send a we can send a message to copper. <laughs> they just only can respond one time. <laughs> That's true. You can also call uh, Dimitri. If you're really yeah. Yeah, I don't know where any of them are. <laughs> That's fair. Mac was kind of not there. Um. All right. Well, I uh, guess I'll. Call uh, Harold, see where he's got. Oh, let's see. It's, it's like something short and sweet. Hey, Harold, uh, Pip and I are done with what we're doing. Where's everybody else? Call me back. Harold, what have you been doing this morning, today, on the day of oh. our going to the bank? Uh, if I hadn't finished my wilhelm protecting device uh i would be still working on that um okay make a uh we did never roll for this yeah i know make a make an arcana check <laughs> um 13 plus 13 is 26 Fantastic. Um, so with working with Veda and Wilhelm as much as you could on this in particular, you think you have something pretty solid. Um, and uh, how would how do you think Harold would want to adjust his tattoos? Because it will require an adjustment of scarring. Ooh. You're going to have to actually do some scarring, huh? And then the spell that you were talking about doing is a success. You, you successfully think you've created something that would be helpful in such a scenario. Okay. So if, if we're going to have to physically maim our friend a little more, um... We've got this whole like Vitruvian man kind of situation going on uh, with the the spell circle. Um, what what kind of spells am I getting from what's in the circle? Like, there's got to be a magical effect this is making. So, if I wanted to alter it just a little bit to make it something else, I would need to figure out what it is. So, this isn't a spell per se. 
this is more of a binding ritual, right? Um, it is essentially a prayer carved into flesh and given some semblance of div- uh, divine magic pumped through it to align a portion of a solar soul with that of a humanoid, a human being, a materialist. So anywhere that it talks about alignment and connection, I would I would want to replace the terminology with words that have to do with abjuration. I I would want to like you know break cycles and and protect instead of connect and like use what i can to change languages in like not languages languages but change the verbiage to with similar enough words that i'm not killing my friend while we do this uh ab- attempt to abjure as opposed to conjure I'm going to ask this question. Are you trying to do it now, or are you wanting to make sure that you have it 100%? I'd I'd want to make sure I have it right. Okay. Measure twice, cut once. Then I will write write up a prayer for you over the course of this next week and get it to you, so that way you can adjust it how you see, how you think it ought to be done. Ooh, baby. This is going to be fun. (laughs) As you start to inscribe, a message comes in. Hey, Harold? (laughs) (laughs) I hope you didn't need that (laughs) earlobe. Like Harold, like is it is so embarrassed that he doesn't think about it. He casts life transference just to hear the ear heal the (laughs) earlobe. I don't think you're doing it now. I think it's a matter of (laughs) focusing. Fuck it, it was funny. <laughs> Cut your ear a little uh... <laughs> Anyway. Carry on. Um but yeah, I get this I get this message from Mac and Harold uh is almost misses the opportunity to respond just because he's so kinda in the zone doing research and thinking about stuff. Oh, oh, uh, yes, uh I haven't seen. Uh, I, I imagine I hadn't seen Wilhelm that morning because he was doing his uh, his thing. Um, long, yeah. Yeah. Um, Ve- Veda had to had to run. She had something to take care of. Um, but uh, I, well, I, I suppose I'm here at uh, at the lab at the Brownstone. I'm sure Wilhelm will be by any moment. And that's right. what you get. All right, Pip. Well, looks like Harold's at home, so uh, let's say we pick up some muffins and head on over. Yeah, sounds good. I Maybe think you we're... can use your new card. <laughs> <laughs> no. All I can see is frowning, Kermit. <laughs> nope. No, I don't want to. <laughs> All right. I'm I'm easy being rich. As we <laughs> all join back up at the Brownstone, that's where we're going to take a good. break. You're muted. I know. I just said our real break this time. Yeah, a real break this time. Nice. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us for a Sinner's Dream thus far. I hope you have enjoyed yourself so far. Be sure to get your stinky elf eggs in and send the counterfeits to JD. Um, we'll be back in 10. I have more. A few more. Do you want me to just start shoving them into my mouth on no, stream? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Waffle House. Waffle House. <laughs> Waffle House, please sponsor us. Try to figure <laughs> I dare you. Chat, try to figure out what any of that was prior to that. <laughs>
You know, my, my sister actually tracks national crises by the Waffle House tracker, and you can actually see how much of a crisis situation is going on oh, by 100%. the number of the, yeah, uh, the, Waffle Houses that are closed. Yeah, no, the Waffle, the House Waffle Houses are closed, is, everyone's fucked. That, that's, that's not just like a people to make, keep track, like federal agencies keep track of that. <laughs> yeah. Like FEMA looks at the Waffle House you know, closure indicator and goes, shit. Yeah, it's it's a real uh, that thing. was and month I'm, month one through six of COVID was uh was pretty hefty on that. And I and I'm still gonna point out that despite the fact that those are interesting facts, still not what led to us shouting Waffle House. So, right. That's, that's right. No luck. context at all. Yeah. Welcome back to a Sinner's <laughs> Dream, <by> people. <laughs> <laughs> it's all bullshit all the time and yeah, where, where did we go where did we um, where did we beat up uh copper's friend it was uh inter- was it international house of waffles is that yes. was that what it was yeah yes <laughs> I, just, I, just keep, I just keep referring to it as not fantasy denny's because <laughs> <laughs> that's the only that's the only one of those chains we don't like we don't mention in that i never got to finish my steak and eggs from that game oh I'm pissed. Oh, they're a little well done now. I'm sorry. I know. So as you all meet back up at the brown stone. Got our fit elf eggs now. Who's doing what? What's the plan? The floor is yours. Uh, I've, I must say that I probably walk in late morning. What's that for Wilhelm? Like nine? Yeah. <laughs> nine, nine, yeah, nine, nine, ten, ten a.m. Yeah, and uh, nine. Uh, I will immediately go to uh, cleaning myself up a bit uh, from the previous evening, and then yeah, right back to work. Um, I guess with looking at Harold's notes, looking at my text, my picture on the wall, if you will. Uh, if I may, I, I, Harold at this point is operating under the assumption that he and uh, Wilhelm are working towards the exact same goal. Um, so you have, therefore, full use of all of Harold's, you know, facilities, books, lab equipment, all that kind of stuff that we've been using. Right. I'm going to find a corner and open the package. Opening up the package, a small black box falls out. Velvet. A single hinge. Oh, no. No, 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 no. It fucking better not be. I'm just, like, just, like, with a wry smile, just going to open it up. I am going to slip it onto your character sheet in Foundry. Mm-hmm. Still with Pip. Let's see inventory. It's a blowgun. <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> so ah, going old school. It's very cold to the touch. <laughs> it is very shiny. Mm-hmm. Clean. Doesn't look like it's been even so much as touched. Is it familiar? No. Oh. So, okay. So it's not the one that, okay. It's not. That's not. No note to go with it. So assuming Pip's still around because he's super nosy and, you know, you got to see his thing. So he's just yeah, be around you. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Pip's going to be like. <laughs> you got to see his well, phrasing. Quick first off. I know, right? <laughs> Hey, we were cold. You don't know how we had to snuggle to keep warm. <laughs> I got to see your thing. I have Pip a jacket and I'm covered with hair. Pip, Pip will be like, Sir, yeah, but it was real cold. Which, what'd you get from the vapor? Uh, it's not from the vapor. Uh, when I went to go finish up everything uh, with Mabel's estate, uh, I was uh, part of the will was uh, this key and turns out to be this uh, little ring 
Does it fit any of my? Does it look like it'll fit any of my fingers? Mm-hmm. A specific finger? Mm-hmm. It's this one. <laughs> <laughs> It's a pinky. Put it, finger. put it on, and you know, it's like you put it on, and there's a sound of a, you know, Eric Coker. Fuck you, Mac. Oh. <laughs> on the middle finger. Fuck, fuck you, Mac. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on. Okay. I need you to make a Christmas save. saving throw. Okay. Close. God damn it. Uh, yeah, I knew something like this would fucking happen. Thankfully, I'm proficient in Christmas saving throws. Uh, let's see. That's a 16. 22. Okay. Noted. Carry on. Great. Uh, and I wish I was proficient in Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of us do. You're taking Resi Charisma at the, uh, I'm <laughs> at kidding. the next opportunity. I am, and, I uh... am proficient in Charisma saving throws. <laughs> You're still taking Resi Charisma at the next one. <laughs> That's weird. So, yeah, I'll put it on and just kind of think about it for an hour, I guess. Okay. See if anything happens. Nothing happens. Cool. Well, I'll just leave it on. However, it will take up an attunement slot. Interesting. <laughs> just because she doesn't want you to have good things. I know, right? doesn't do anything. It just means you can use less. Since I have nothing currently attuned, because I don't think the armor requires attunement. It's your rifle? Nope. Not rifle does not. Nice. nice. Neither does the slap ribbon. Uh, yeah. Oh. Neither does the uh, necrotic ring. Um. So, yeah. No, I'm good. I will write that down on my sheet under something. Find room. What you see, Pip, is a black and rose gold ring that is pristine, intertwined with each other. That's uh, that's really pretty. Yeah, it's kind of nice, ain't it? Yeah, that's... That's a nice little memento to remember her by. Yeah, ain't bad. What about your thing? Did you, like, punch somebody with it or anything? Oh, um, well, I, I kind of have options. Well, do you want to, like, come on, give me one on the shoulder, see what happens? Uh, I think you would not like that, and I just hold it up and it just goes it becomes a dagger ice just kind of sh like a shard of ice coalesces into place okay yeah that'd be kind of bad and then I turn into like a billy club and then it gets a little bit larger before it begins to smooth out and then I warp it into a blowgun and then it melts into it before it begins, like the ice kind of goes out the butt end of his hand. Right, so basically that could be anything you want it to be? Anything that's not too complex. Okay, I was going to say, can you make it a gun? Because that'd be rad. I can make it look like a gun, and I warp it into like a just a weird club. It just looks like it looks like a pistol, but it's it's like solid <laughs> pistol whips. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't bad, especially for uh, you know some people that might be a little un you know hot under the collar. Yeah, I've already I've already been thinking about it, you know. So like, say we got like a civilian, and I just want to intimidate him. I'm just like freeze. <laughs> oh God. Yep. Yeah, all right. Sure. I mean, that, that's um. <clears throat> yeah. Do you want some coffee? I'm gonna go get some coffee. <laughs> that's my oh, favorite shit. Batman line. <laughs> Everybody freeze. Oh God. Yeah, I'm just gonna go try and find a coffee maker that isn't uh, flying. Okay. I mean, he's got, it's it's Harold's house. There's definitely coffee makers 
there is a robust espresso machine like better than your better than the best cafe in town espresso machine behind the bar counter but uh, make an intelligence check to you right true <laughs> so, <laughs> make an intelligence check for each step of the process there's I don't a grinder even know. there there's oh. a there's like you know yeah there's every every aspect of this of this of the process has to be done I'll just kind or of you scratch- can just ask the unseen servant to do it I'll just kind of scratch my head and get a pitcher of water <laughs> it's like, nah, <laughs> nah. Yeah, just relax, kind of thumbing the ring a little bit. That's all I'm doing. Other than typing on my character sheet. <laughs> Uh, I guess it, it. Yeah, I guess at some point, unless I don't know when Copper shows up. Late. What time? Last. What, I was gonna say, what time does <laughs> Copper show up? Is my what time does he leave? Uh, sorry. What time is everyone getting there? Right now. Oh, uh, like, I would say that probably Pippin, uh, Mac got back about noonish. Copper's gonna get there at like two o'clock. <laughs> Okay, is there anything he's going to do on the on, on the trip over? Because it's taking it's going to take like forty five minutes to get there. No. No. Make a perception check. Okay. Seventeen. Okay. Brilliant. Walking up to the brown uh, to the brownstone, there is uh, after you know a, a bit of a chilly morning. Kind of have to button things up a little bit closer as the wind is kind of blowing through in the grayscale space walking through the crowds people for the most part avoid you um sitting on the steps of the brownstone is a it's an old man very thin wearing basically rags and holding a copper cup out his eyes are kind of just closed lazily One of, them's, uh, one of them opens up, but you can see that he's blind. Hmm. Hey, uh, I, I think you're on um, my friend's doorstep. Which is probably oh, you, fine, but like... You friend of Bright Eyes? With, uh, did, who? Bright Eyes? Who's that? His real name. The one with the bright eyes is one of the only ones I can see. Say, could you help my knee this morning? He he got here a little late. He hasn't really come out yet. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, what do you need? It just hurts. I'll dump a cure wounds into him. <laughs> As you do, you kind of like put that that icky nastiness that kind of pulses through his knee. Mm-hmm. He, you see him kind of flinch at the touch at first. Before going Sorry. Out. Copper apologizes uh, as he casts cure wounds. <laughs> God, you're so fucking Canadian. I love it. <laughs> Interesting. Thank you, young sir. Yeah. Uh, no problem, man. Mm-hmm. Sir. Whenever you get in there, will you tell bright eyes that i'd like at least the leftover bacon Possibly. yeah yeah sure i i'll do that for you thank you okay i hope your knee feels better it, it, oh, it does significantly thank nice. you okay all right i'll see i'll, I'll see you later i guess and <laughs> i'll head in <clears throat> okay. Hi. Uh, which one of you is Bright Eyes? Uh, Wilhelm will like look up, like barely from the the book that he's buried in. Uh, 
Oh, that's his Bartleby. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I and as you see him now with your seventeen perception and his glowing whitish orange eyes that he perpetually has. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, he, I took care of his knee uh, but he says that he wants the leftover bacon at yes, least yeah I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry I'm, I'm a bit distracted I will care of it yeah, thank you yeah. okay um, uh, Kappa it, uh, and he like closes the book and, and kind of pulls it in it occurs to me that uh, we have not really told you much of what is going on here. No. Uh, no one has. And I will look around. Where is everyone else? Like, you know, I can't line up, like, view. Like, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm probably very to... nearby you. Yeah. Mac are probably at a at a table. Yeah, we're down uh, on the kitchen Punch. area. Yeah, yeah, checking out items, putting putting various uh, muffins, breads, pastries <laughs> on the table. Uh, Breakfast. They they look su- suspiciously similar to the ones that Harold's Cafe serves that are allegedly homemade. <laughs> <laughs> when is the last time uh, anyone has been to the office? Have we been? the office well oh I just I think uh, perhaps copper um, usually gets a bit situated yeah so uh you I know you just got here are you, you good for a walk uh sure uh, can I eat one of these <clears throat> these muffins okay yeah, no, go they're, ahead they're, they're a little over everybody but I, you know I reckon I Wait, do, do I have to pay for them? No. I no, I just we just brought them. Mac bought them. You can ask Wilhelm if uh, you want one toasted though. I I don't I highly recommend. I just had chocolate for the first time not too long ago. I highly recommend that chocolate croissant. Like there's chocolate in that croissant? Yes. I had two. I ate the other one. I definitely want to eat that. I, I um, I've never had a croissant that was fresh. It's so soft. I crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. These things are usually like rocks by the time I get them. Uh, yeah. Great. Uh, and he's gonna take a croissant and a muffin. Yeah. I'm ready to walk now. Oh, good. Uh, Harold, uh, leftovers still in the kitchen. Morning. I skipped breakfast. Oh, do you want a muffin? Ah, uh, no, I. Was... Thank you. Suit yourself. I prefer them toasted. Randall Great. leans over to you, Harold, and is just like, "There's a lot of tension in this room. That's very odd. In a lot of different well, ways." I don't... Randall, and he turns away you... from from Pip and Copper and just goes. I've never met anybody who hasn't at least had a croissant in their life that was fresh. Uh, Randall, do you recall me explaining multiple times how dangerous my line of work is? Yes, but how does that correlate to croissants not being fresh? Well, in their lives, they've spent a lot of time in places that no one else would be doing things that no one else would do. And yesterday, that one, and I lean over and look at uh, Wilhelm, <laughs> tried to kill all of us. So and they, you'd, you'd understand why there's tension in the room. It wasn't really him. It's a long story. Right. At that point, exactly. yeah, I would say at that point, I'm coming back out of the kitchen with the food. <laughs> um, not to be a stickler, but I'm pretty sure I did kill most of them. I... <laughs> Only for like a minute. Um, Please Wilhelm don't comes me. out with like a fully cooked tray of bacon and uh, said, and Harold goes, 
Oh, I don't recall uh, having uh, the ele the electrician over to fix the oven. That's strange. A uh, cop, are you ready to go? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna grab. I got an idea. I'm gonna grab a piece of bacon real quick, <laughs> and he's gonna um put the bacon like <laughs> on top of the chocolate croissant. <laughs> This is just what Eli wants. <laughs> Fuck Copper. <laughs> he turns back around and goes, he put the bacon on the croissant. <laughs> gonna take Pippi's, a bite and kind of like... Pippi's wide-eyed like <laughs> Copper's a genius. Her Harold, who aside from the shenanigans he's gotten into with this group, has never done anything mildly out of step in his life, goes, he's a mad genius. <laughs> Wait, don't tell me you agree with him. Okay. You should try it. Are you telling me you don't? This young Vidalkin, maybe about 14, 15, somewhere in there, turns around and like looks at you and he's got a uh uh <clears throat> he's got like a like a cast on that is in the process of being like taken care of. He turns and just goes I don't know that I can try that. But thank you for the offer. Uh, with a the fourteen, do I notice that Mac is drinking water and not whiskey? With a what? Fourteen. I'm not with hiding it. <laughs> like an insight. Oh, you know, insight. Like a, I gave I'd, say, I'd say clear. I'd say passive insight would just clear glass. Uh, with a yeah. nineteen. With a nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you ready? Uh, yeah. Good, yeah. let's go. Okay. <laughs> As you guys step outside, there is a... Uh, well, first off, roll perception checks, please, both of you. Ooh! 28. That is in my Jesus. 16. 28. So... Stepping out onto the porch, there is a bit of a scuffle happening at the moment as a young man, maybe about eight years old with kind of a flat cap on, you can see a bit of a curly hair kind of f curling out over the top of his, uh, his ears, uh, not much better dressed than Copper, if at all, uh, whenever you first met him, a um, bit more rotund, like pulling at the Copper Cup of Bartleby. It's just like, give me your cup now, please. Hit it. And he's just like, ah, no, no, I. And oh, Eddie, old Eddie person. Wolf, <laughs> Eddie, Eddie Wolf is fighting for the cup. And as you look up and around, you can see across, uh, across the street, you can see Devin and Elaine, uh, like hiding in one of in in behind like a set of trash cans. And as you cast Hold Person, he just. Uh, sorry, well, Wilhelm, I I know this kid. Uh, Eddie, mm. you gonna stop fighting this guy if he lets you go? Mm. Please. I think as as this like Wilhelm takes some very slow steps down the stairs, and as I step closer and closer, to this child. <laughs> Like that, my eyes just flare up, and again, just something, something in the air around me lights on fire real quick. Like I, I think I explained this before, like lint catching fire on, on clothing. Mm -hmm. His eyes just get real wide as he's just still just. And I'll just drop it. Well, did you have to scare him? <laughs> <laughs> he, he lets go and just scampers off, like falling over. He just goes, "Copper, you have weird friends now." <laughs> Just takes off down the street. <laughs> so, sorry about that. It's funny that they wound up here. Uh, Notice uh, that the other two have not left. Devin, Laney, what are you hanging out for? You're not going to try and get this guy's cup either, right? <clears throat> 
As you say that, calling out across, Devin takes off. <laughs> Back down the alleyway, and Elaine just kind of... <sighs> you see this dark-skinned girl across the street, kind of in similar rags. Her hair braided tight against her, like, across her shoulders, and just goes, All we wanted was some change for some food. Oh, I can help you with that now. Here. What? I come here, okay? And be careful with it. She looks across the street as a car goes mm. by. Uh, and she proceeds to sit for a second before wings begin to come across her back as she transforms into a bird. And then flutters over and sits back down on the like lands on the the the, the rail of the steps and just kind of reappears what you mean i got a job i got new clothes you got a job i know you're like, you're like you're only like 15 16 I 19 know how i'm 19 sure that's like prime job getting age and that's what they all say we're all yeah. 19 okay but who's gonna get you supper because it's gonna be me so probably me but you know it's gonna be me <laughs> <laughs> uh copper's gonna give her um not really having any concept of like the actual value of money still <laughs> um is gonna give her i don't know like five gold notes i guess wilhelm's gonna walk over <laughs> and just in in full and is being intimidating as i can possibly be in this moment which it seems like it's very um, there are better ways to do this than to steal from others. Well, would you Helen, feel good? Would you have felt good if this man died so that you could eat today? Well, Helen, please. Slow. <laughs> to make it worse for to make this worse for Copper and better for Wilhelm. I'm casting prestidigitation to do like ominous whispers behind his voice. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> as he's talking, you hear. But that's, was that, was that a felt good? Oh my God. She peels the, the notes the, out of your hand. Go, okay, go. And I'll just turns into a rat and just disappears yeah. over the thing and takes off. <laughs> <laughs> but there are ways you can teach them to survive that do not require them to. Uh, inhibit someone else and lean over and uh, sort of uh, instinctually I'll just I'll use my healing hands on on Bartleby and oh um, yeah mistress this morning it's okay so I got you some we all have things going on well everybody else has things going on it's quite all right but perhaps if you are um gracious with our host here Maybe he can find something. I'm blind and I am hobbled. What do you think he's going to give me to do? Just so charismatic. Look at that, mm -hmm. look at that face, it lights up a room. There it is, <laughs> right? <laughs> Surely he could just greet guests or something at the bookstore. I, I we, we could find something. I don't. I um. Don't. Who do you think I am? I don't work at at a, at a place over in the shopping district. I don't work at the Harvest Crown. Uh, Harold goes up to the man and says, um, "Not being funny. Do you read, sir?" This feels like a trick question. Harold uh, walks inside briefly and from a shelf that looks like nobody's gone to it in quite some time, pulls out a dusty book with no obvious lettering on it. Um, and he, 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 he says, it's a bit old. It may be a bit damaged, but... Um, you, you might find this interesting. 
and he uh, offers him a book that's if you you know run your finger over it is clearly written in braille he takes it kind of cautiously at first and opens it up and begins to rub his fingers across before you see his Thank you. Um, I'm afraid, uh, by damaged, I mean, there may be parts of the book that don't make sense because, well, over time, the dots have become a little less, um, firm. And, uh, you know, you may miss some meaning, but I hope uh, the context will help you out. It'll be just fine. Thank you. Uh, if something happens to you out here, Bartleby, go inside. Look How for the far biggest. In can I go? As far as you need to. Just find the. This is a big bull. You can't miss him. Even you. Uh, uh, ironically, nice. there are a handful of unseen servants um, that uh, that tend to the place. If you need anything, just listen and we'll ask for it, and one of them will bring it by. They have a name. No, they just you you, you it simply say something like, "I'd like a cup of coffee," and they'll bring one to you. Oh, is that how that thing works? Oh yes, sorry, Mac. I was enjoying myself too much. <laughs> he, he walks out. And he like is just finishing a glass of water and sets it on the on the table inside. Oh well, shit. <laughs> As you walk out, you notice him, like, stop looking at everybody else and looking directly at Mac. They look behind me. <laughs> Love that. He looks away and just kind of continues. I appreciate the hospitality. Listen, uh, your eyes may not work very well, but I know for a fact how good those ears are. Keep them to the ground for us. Intention. Think this is happening while we're gone. And we will keep you safe. We will keep you well fed. Too. Um, we, we do have to go to the office for a bit. I can trust that you can take everything here. Take care of everything here, Bartleby. Of course. Do everything I can. Um, it's copper. He kind of flashes like a thankful smile at Harold. Um, if you are all, you are all welcome to come, I, I guess I get him set up, maybe get to a desk at the office. What? I, I believe there could be uh, some benefit to all of us uh, heading over there. I don't believe uh, we've had a chance to stop by uh, recently. Yeah, I'm down. Uh, okay. Uh, so as they um, start walking, oh, Kappa, I, I don't. It's it has come to my attention that perhaps you have not gotten the full breadth of what is happening. I will be in very hushed tones um, be speaking with him. The agency that we work for now, not one that we can speak about with gay people. They feel it in the back of your mind. It's something that literally harms us. A form of... Okay. You can sort of dance around the issue if you need to, but for the most part, uh, don't mention anything directly. Uh, you may have seen in the building, for sure. Crystal, yes? Giant purple one? Yeah. Yeah, a couple times. Inside, well, they're sort of all inside that. What? Yes, it's confusing to be outside looking in, but 
Have you ever seen... And he points, I mean, kind of me. gestures, gestures way up at the sky. Yeah, Somewhere. I've seen the sky, Wilhelm. It's like a bin. Have you ever seen it take on a purple hue certain times of day? There's no color here. Somewhere beyond that. There is a fire. It's meant to exterminate. The entity inside that crystal brought us all in here, protect us from it. Okay. It is similar to a lich's phylactery, if you will. Understanding of the. Make an arcana check to see if you understand phylactery and liches. Oh, wait, wait. 15. Uh, I would say that you probably know <clears throat> a bit about how this works, though I don't know that you would know the full extent. Supposedly, there is a way to uh, take on, essentially, uh, immortality through taking the souls of many others um, and shoving them into a rock, but you're not sure of the intricacies of how that works. Now, how any of this relates to entity? Which you have seen before. It's in dreams that suddenly. Okay. That is this person. A lifetime here yeah, is a moment out there. And is this Alhara? Us... Yes, just be careful saying the name out loud. That's a bit okay. that's a big one. Okay. Trust me. It hurts. Okay. 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 Um, but yes, that is... That is who I'm speaking. Irvin Zahora. Yeah, I connected that set of dots uh, at about 2.30 in the morning last night, so... In person. Yeah. Uh, but what I have not determined is whether it's the right thing to do uh, to trap us all here. The theory is that they are saving us. There's a free will aspect that seems to be suspiciously missing, yes? Uh, with us being in here, you mean? Oh, and yes, because we apparently, as, as best I can understand it, we are in here forever. There's no afterlife. There's just a recycling of what's that happens with our spirits. And or they are devoured to nourish the magic that keeps this place alive. <laughs> At that degree, we, we don't 100% know what is happening. But didn't you say the alternative was like terrible the alternative is destruction that is just death is inevitable Harper. easy way you look at it <laughs> yeah let's Mac get existential just, bitches Max yeah. just laughing <laughs> annoying I just look backwards like for a second it is inevitable for all of us Particularly in this place, right, where, where life expectancy we have read ours should be significantly longer or drastically shorter. I mean, I'm surprised I made it this long, if I'm honest. So. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> so, our reality that we know is not really the reality that exists. It is a fabrication of hers. Okay. All right. So, but well, we don't know, so we don't know what side we're on. We are on the uh, but that's this is what we do here. We are investigators. We undercover these mysteries. We find all the facts, and we use this information uh -huh. to come to a conclusion. Well, well home, yeah. I need a wisdom saving throw, please. Ah, shit. <clears throat> yeah, that's about right. 13. Just a 
a second. Okay. Wilhelm's head just explodes. I want to make conversation. <laughs> I mean, not that I'm not wishing harm upon Wilhelm, but um, 37 points of psychic damage as you see blood begin to pour from his nose. Aren't hey. all of us warded? Are you? Are you okay? You. What do you mean warded? Like we're all under the the same uh, Gaius. Yes, he's the one talking about it out loud. Can I make a perception check to see if there's anybody within earshot? Oh, sure can. To 37 points? Yep. Didn't even think about that. We're like walking down the street. I did. I was, I, I yeah. Oh my fucking Christ. <laughs> God. It's a 10. I think, huh? yeah. <laughs> can let me, let can me, we let me help? See. Yeah, sure. Everybody's looking. I mean, Roll it again. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's a, my passive is 19. <laughs> that is that grants you the chance to see. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Perception. My passive perception is twenty. Or make another perception check. You have help. I'm. I'm not looking. I'm still just not kinda, looking. It's a twelve. It's a seventeen. I'm chuckling 17. to myself. As you are walking along, you don't really see it until it's a little too late, as it bounces off of one of the steps of the nearby houses, as a rat kind of has to leap off behind to go behind a trash can ah uh, yes copper that is what i'm talking about oh that's the thing yep that's the thing all right okay well we should stop talking about it then because that does not yeah good. yeah yeah maybe maybe wait uh okay all right uh is this way Hey, can I ask you something more like, you know, not big brain universe? Potentially. I, I'm sure I've it's had... fine. You can keep talking about it. Whatever that was left. No. Oh, uh, no, it, it's not related at all. I, I just, I got these new clothes and um, it makes how bad my hair is really obvious. And you look like a guy who knows where to get a good haircut. So... Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't. I, I go to uh, one of the the community barber shops. The uh, uh, cheap. That sounds good to me. I like cheap. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Uh, you look great, <laughs> by the way. Uh, where did you get the um the garments? They were made for me by my. That's wonderful. People, That's... my new nice people. Do you want to? What no, I help? No, I. Let's take a minute. Are you gonna like walk it off or? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Y'all are just heading to the heading to the, <laughs> yep. head to the office. A little cross-eyed. <laughs> Thirty thirty-seven points of psychic damage. Five d ten. For one of Copper's friends, this disguised as a goddamn rat. <laughs> So as you all walk across town, doesn't take very long. You're only like three blocks of memory serves from the brownstone. Um, you walk across a park. You notice that the rat follows you all the way, Wilhelm. You're muted. Uh, I shouted 19 insight, baby. I laughed at myself. Too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just because... Um, as you all are fireball uh, the rat <laughs> approach this tall building um you follow them copper into essentially just a long hallway with steps you can see there's a set of mailboxes out front uh, a, a plaque with a variety of different names that are kind of like in there and you can see weatherford hole investigations floor three um you know, it gives the full address there. And as you kind of make your way up to that third floor at the far end, there's a smoked out window uh, on a door that just say, in the, just says Weatherford Hole Investigations, uh, WHI. 
and as you all enter, uh, like go to enter in, it's oh. locked. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's just what I was gonna. Ask. So I will unlock it. Okay. And holds the door open for everyone. Okay. The rat follows nope. as much as it can. Yeah. No. As soon as the rat goes, I'm going to shut it and pick up the rat. <laughs> Make 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 an athletics check or an acrobatics check. <laughs> Damn it! Never mind. Don't worry about it. I got a three. <laughs> well, wait a minute. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you got a twenty-six. That's a nine for an eleven. Okay. Still not great. Uh, as you close it and go to scoop. You grab a hold of this this like dark uh, dark furred rat, and it just begins to and it as you can see that black uh, that like that that dark skinned girl kind of like trying to pull away as she's just like let me go. Just, that, that, that. Very rude. Did I catch that Will shut the door before he came in? Oh yeah, you're yeah. probably seeing me. I'm just holding your friend up in the air right now. <laughs> I've got. A- I'm gonna look, go back for him. Smart move. We should probably kick them out. They're spying. Oh, Pip, it's all right. They're kids. Oh, Pip, which knives uh, did you bring? No. All of them. Oh my god, no, you people I are just insane. Go! I'll go over and uh, just, you know, <laughs> swipe some poison on him. <laughs> Hi! Uh, let me check something real quick. Just con save, unless they're mute. I know, that's why I'm checking. Let's see. Nope, doesn't say anything about that, so here we go. Disadvantage. (laughs) Disadvantage? Yeah, well, you have a disadvantage on any checks. You don't have a save, sorry. You don't have a save for the effects, except for the Oh yeah, no, I fail. I got like a five. Nah. Welcome to the club, pal. I'm going to put you down. Please. She, do she that. watches her cheeks fill with throw up for a moment. She. That. Oh my god. Put her down. And she runs over to like the umbrella stand and. <laughs> Copper's gonna get in between her and everybody else. <laughs> Why would you touch me with that weird goopiness? Now the last bunch of people he didn't like, he set on fire. Not him, the other one. The last bunch of people he did like, he set on fire. That's a good point. Honestly, it's still up for debate. These, can, can you let me handle these three kids, please? I will and not scare them the way point you, you have to the been? last conversation we just had. Oh yeah, but can I please So if just... you value these people. Yeah. Get them to understand that they should stay far away. I will, and I will do walk that. Inside. <laughs> <laughs> Copper's going to turn <laughs> around and go over to her and <laughs> me open I open the d- door creaks because nobody's been to the office in a while. <laughs> you can't just walk. I'll grab the WD-40. Uh, so you're pulling Elena aside? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go over and I'm going to like, like Copper probably has to like literally get on his knees to be on eye level with her and he will. And he's going to grab her face and like a sandwich. Like, what are you doing? Following these people around. Yeah. You had more money than you've had in a while. I just figured I'd come see where you got the money from. Okay, but you can't get the money from here, and I'll keep giving you money, but you can't do this kind of shit. That's what we do. I know, I know it's what we do, but, like, I don't want you to get in trouble, and these people, like, look into people. So let me help you. Define look into people. Like, the hooks look into people, or, like... Don't worry about it. You don't have to worry about it because I am going to worry about it, okay? And stop fighting old men in the street. Tell the boys that, okay? That wasn't my idea. Yeah, and it was embarrassing for me to have that be the first time that these people met you. 
So don't Again, do that anymore. It's not my fault. I don't know what to tell. Why are you blaming me for it? It wasn't I my just... idea. Can you just pass it along until I see the all of you again actually I'm gonna write down copper's gonna find a little scrap of paper <laughs> in one of his pockets and write down um where Fenton Wilds is and okay. give it to Lainey and just come to this place and like nothing shady just like come wait outside and I'm gonna meet you like this evening, maybe, okay? She takes it and looks at the address and just kind of takes it for a moment. Did you write Finwild's Fabulous Fineries on no. it? No. Okay, just the address? Yeah. This is in the docks. And yeah. That's shady. Just don't worry about it. I told you I'm going to worry about it. I'm gonna, gonna help take care of you, okay? But you have to work with me here. Work with you here? Maybe when you're older, okay? We'll talk about it. We'll see how I get along first. You're only like 16. And she just kind of walks out the door <laughs> with all the attitude she can. Gets up and just heads in. Uh, the office itself is uh, dark until you come in to turn on the lights. There are a handful of desks kind of in order, uh, open space here. There is a large set of windows with the, all the blinds currently drawn, some of them kind of cockeyed down at the bottom, letting some of that grayscale light in. Um, there are uh, There's a table where there is a brand new coffee maker uh, already in place um, with a, a couple of different files next to it. There are a, a couple of different filing cabinets that kind of line one wall, and then there's an entire uh, separate office that has uh, kind of like built-in uh, built-in glass windows um, that are all have the shades drawn over the top of it. I remember somebody bringing this coffee maker. Is this also one of Copper's friends? <laughs> Make an insight check. I just start making coffee. <laughs> Eye it suspiciously. It is not one of Copper's <laughs> friends yet. What is with my rolling? I don't know, man. When is this curse gonna go away? Never. <sighs> so you guys are at what's so, the goal in this case? Yeah, uh, so I will begin to because uh, I don't remember how many desks were in the office, but I feel like there's a vacant are... one now. <laughs> Which one? Oh, Padre's, right? There's two vacant ones now. Yeah. There's uh, six desks. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I would find... Pods, yeah? Mm-hmm. And whose was the other one? Richard. Oh, that's right. Mr. Fiddlers. Best to avoid that one. Uh, I was going to take it to, yeah. to Pods. You never know what you'll find there. Uh, this is uh, a friend of ours who I, I am sure will not mind. But you can work here. Copper's gonna like open up a couple of the drawers and like. As you open up one of the bigger bottom drawers, a glass orb with a bit of metal kind of uh, attached to it comes buzzing out as it kind of. As this electric blue orb begins to spark with an electric smile on the interior, is it? God and damn it! it I like thought a, that thing left. Spins around for a second. Yeah, the whole time. What is it? And why is it? Yeah. Left See, this is the magic of what we do, Papa. We don't know. <laughs> Copper is gonna try and like, cause it's like levitating, right? Yeah. So he's gonna like try and like scoop around it and just put it back in the drawer. As you do, a little bitty spark of electricity kind of <laughs> into the fingertip, and <laughs> and then it flies up into a corner of the room and just kind of gets. Okay, well that thing aside. So it was I... it was a mechanical object called flimsy at one point, which was also the coffee maker, and now it is Gertz. So uh, we don't know, but it's uh, for the most part friendly. You know? 
don't just... Is it my responsibility now? Uh, no. no. Okay, good. You want it? No. Okay. Uh, it's pods anyway, so I'm sure he will but back it up. What do I... It, to be clear, what? there is no part of Flimsy left on this Gertz. Right, right. Uh, okay. Sorry, I work at this desk, but like, what do I put in it? What do I do here? So, uh, for now, uh, I will, you know, just get, make things, make it your own. A bit of flair, pictures. Um... But uh, as cases come in, I think, uh, in particular, we will work with you and your, your skill set to identify and try to locate things. You, of course, in your spare time can try to go through um, cold cases, and I'll bring it to a large, what I imagine is a very large filing cabinet filled with <laughs> cold cases. Uh, uh, feel free to go through any of these. You can see the, uh, the way they're filed, and, uh, the information we've taken and gathered. Okay. That will start to give you uh, kind of a warm-up. If something clicks, write it down or talk to one of us. That's what we do. Unfortunately, we uh, work on a client basis, so people to come in with things to solve for us to really be effective, okay. what we do. But uh, we also need to be here, people to come in and... Yeah. But it's all just, it's about asking questions and trying to solve puzzles. Trying to help. I like yeah. puzzles. You want to play with your new thing with, uh, you know, Gertie in the corner there? I think it might be a little weird to just, nah. you know, attack it. Yeah. Remember, we don't know what this thing's watching. Hey, um, Gertz? Gertz. Can you show us anything else in your crystal ball as you ask that question no one has ever asked that god damn it <laughs> the mouth the electrical mouth opens yeah. to like this big o and then an illusion <laughs> fills the space as the record that was within it finally oh is god. revealed Help me, Obi-Wan. You're my only hope. <laughs> Not it a fills... single one of us thought of that. <laughs> it fills the entire room. Oh, Jesus. Let's see. God, we're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. What this one might... We did try to shoot it a bunch. Counts for something, right? <laughs> we did do that. <laughs> Watch, we're going to see ourselves trying to shoot it. It plays through a series of different scenes. The first is odd, to say the least. As you can see, a young Alhora's face just kind of come through, smiling wide in the illusion as she picks up the orb from this perspective. <clears throat> I need to look something up because I wasn't ready for this. You weren't ready for it. I wasn't. <laughs> My notes are away. Just saying. I don't think any of us As is ready for it. She says, So nice to meet you. Go, Gertrude. Zolaiti Versat. And then it flickers for a second. And the scene shifts again to that of what looks like a workshop where you can hear the sound of the ocean crashing, but you don't have a source for it as you're inside of this dugout cave with a ladder that goes up into uh, into the earth. And you can see a, uh, a workbench and a series of beanbag chairs kind of littered around it's like a it's like a weird hangout space there's a bit of music pulsing from the corner and you can see a series of feet that have been tampered with as there are uh for one of you a familiar sight of random pieces of armor kind of slathered across the top of things pouring from them they look like probably some sort of prototype 
as Allie is currently working on a set of feet, and she places a small tube into one of them as it closes up. And they begin to glow with the soft blue that kind of... And she puts them on, and as she stands and she rises, that black armor forms over her and begins to glow with soft blue, uh, like lightning motif. As she jumps excitedly and heelies over to uh, yeah. to a corner and grabs a hold of a stone and starts to call somebody before the scene flickers again. And we can see now another cave that's much darker. As we can see a series of lights kind of filling a cavern. There's a waterfall that pours down over the top of this small, uh, like behind this small island in the middle of an underground lake. A small building sits in the center, as you can see Irvin and Allie, now much older, with Dimitri dressed in arguably archaic clothing. As you can see, Irvin kind of begin to lift up, grabbing a hold of Dimitri as Ali begins to fly overhead as they begin to float over the top of the island towards this small structure. The structure gets closer and closer before the door opens on its own. And Ali just goes, what? And the scene flickers again for a moment before we're back inside of another metallic room full of an odd mishmash of tools it seems like most of what she's doing here most of what gert has seen is all workshop scenes and it's just one workshop scene after another after another as she's sitting there working ali is sitting there working over the top of this purple crystal that's about the size of a football day in day out the last scene she shows is that of a completely demolished building. As Weatherford pulls a pauldron out of the rubble. We see Gert come up and out of the rubble underneath one of those pauldrons. On the other side, before there is a flash of bright white light, and Weatherford collapses. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session. So, God damn it! While that whole thing's happening, I'm just Wilhelm's like got a form and he's tapping copper with the form and the pen. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank Some you guys. Things never change. So much. Hold on. Gotta do some stuff. You don't want this dramatic music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dun, but dun, now we're gonna dun. go the. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us for it. a sinner's dream. I hope you all have enjoyed yourselves. Be sure to get your elf eggs in, counterfeit or not. Apparently. I'm not going to pick a side in this fight. Um, Otherwise, you'll have to do something awful with eggs, too. Yeah, I don't know. I know. That's <laughs> off the table. I uh, hope everyone goes Easy and points. checks, um, you know, Foundry, Forge, Heavy Arms. Go check out Michael Gelfie and, you know, our friends at Midnight Syndicate. Dice Envy. Make sure you get put in the uh, code NEG2 at checkout and get that 10%. It's up to you. I need some. That advice. said. It's so pretty. Hit. Roll a d20 for me. I haven't rolled the black one today. Yeah, the new rich frog. 16. 16. Ooh. Going deep in run. deep, JD. How far are we going? Where are we going? Does anybody have anything they want to talk about before we head out? Mm -hmm. uh, yet. Next, no, not next Sunday. It's gonna never mind. It's gonna be a while. <laughs> oh no! Uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be the. It's gonna be. It's gonna be the fourth of September. It'll be be a while. Yeah. Okay.
Yeah, Thursday yeah. we you know, may, may have a connection back with our illustrious band in other space, Plastic and Dirt. The show must go on, and I uh, have, uh, as far as I know, Soul is back in action. So yeah, Thursday should 100% be a go. Right on. Woo! Plastic Cougar. Well, fantastic. If you're not here for Plastic Cougar, check out Strahd on Sunday as JD tortures me. Uh, and if all else fails, we'll see you guys next week for the next around. episode of... How many times did I kill you on Three? Sunday? Three. Um... <laughs> It was it was not a small amount. JD said <laughs> at the beginning of the session, this might be the day the we last end Strahd. episode of Strahd. And and that's not what I thought he meant. I, 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 <laughs> um, I did not think TPK probable was going to be his uh, his his solution to that. Bob who, are Saga. Go, what do you want? who are you raiding? Uh, we're gonna go to Nat Baba Twenty Lasagna. Productions, Baba Lasagna. Nat Twenty Productions official. They are playing Pathfinder Two E. Ooh! Oh, switching it up today. Yeah. So you know what? Love me some Pathfinder Two yeah. E. Right. Let's go. Uh, let's go make some noise. Be loud. Be proud. Be happy out there. Uh, our week is uh, get, coming to a close as we get to Thursday, and then right, right back around Sunday kind of starts it for us. So hopefully we see you then. Bye, everybody. Later, nerds. Cheers to the news!